Last episode, we looked at how to represent spin states with matrices. This time, we'll look at how to combine your basis states to form other states. All right, let's start with how to represent the state where spin points right, the same state from the first episode. We know that after prepared in the spin up position, a particle has a 50-50 chance of being measured spin right or spin left along when measured on the x direction. As such, the up and down components of this right vector should be equal because the probabilities are equal. The other condition that we must satisfy is that the vector is normalized. We can create a simple vector that satisfies these two requirements and call it the right vector. So, 50-50 and normalized. would lead to a vector that looks like this. We'll call it the right vector. It's 1 over root 2 times the up position, the up state, plus 1 over root 2 times the down state. This is alpha up, and this is alpha down. Since these two are equal, we know that there must be a 50-50 chance of them being chosen. However, how do you know that it's normalized? Well, if we take the inner product of the vector with itself, we get the complex conjugate of alpha u times its times alpha u plus the complex conjugate of alpha d times alpha d, which is, since these are both real, their complex conjugate is the same as their value. It's 1 over root 2 squared plus 1 over root 2 squared, which is 1 half times 2, which is 1. So it is normalized, and it's 50-50 chance. OK, now let's set the left vector. It has the same two requirements of the right vector and one additional one. It must be orthogonal to the right vector. Since up and down are, ortho are orthogonal, if spin up is up, it's definitely not down. The same holds true for any opposite pointing vectors in 3D space, because it doesn't matter what we define our vertical axis as. It can point in any direction. So if spin right, when the y-axis is pointing this way, is that, and spin left is that way, we can just reorient our axes, and suddenly, the same vector is now up, and, and the same vector is now down. So they must be orthogonal, because the same properties apply. As such, the left vector must have equal components, be normalized, and be orthogonal to the right vector. It would look like this, based on our earlier definition. So L for left is 1 over root 2 up minus 1 over root 2 down. Now we see that these are the same value except for the negative sign, so they must be 50-50 like before. And we already proved that when you take the dot product of this with itself, it'll come out to 1. But now to show that these two are orthogonal, we'll take the dot product of t both of them with each other, which would be Since the bra version of the right vector is just the same as the original because there are no complex values, we can just use these two numbers in our calculations. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is multiply the up component times the complex conjugate of this up component. So that's just this times this, since they're both real, and we get 1 over root 2 squared, or 1 half. Now we need to multiply these two values for the same reason negative 1 over root 2 and positive 1 over root 2 gives us negative 1 half. And so the dot product, or the inner product, is 0. So they are orthogonal. All right, we just found two new orthonormal vectors. They're both, they're both normalized and they're orthogonal to each other. Can we use this as, a, as basis states? It turns out that we can. 
There's nothing special about one basis state versus another. It's just helpful to choose one and stick to it because it makes the math simpler. So for our purposes, we'll stick with the up-down basis states. Finally, let's work towards the in and out vectors. These are the last two spin states in three space that we need for all three dimensions. Okay, what do we know? In and out have to be orthogonal to each other, just like left and right and up and down. They need, both need to be normalized, and they both need to have the equal components because of the 50-50 chance. This 50-50 chance is now a property if you measure against up, down, right, or left. That is, in the first episode we said if you set a particle and spin up, it'll have a 50-50 chance of being spin right or spin left. Now it doesn't matter which, uh, which state you set it in before, it'll have a 50-50 chance of being in or out from any of these three. Another way of saying this is that the inner product of in or out with any of these four other basis vectors has to be one half. When we follow this logic, we come to these vectors right here. In is one over radical two up plus i over radical 2 down, and out is 1 over radical 2 up, you guessed it, minus i over root 2 down. And you can prove pretty easily that these are indeed orthogonal to each other, normalized, and 50-50 chance based on the other four vectors. All right, finally, we're gonna take a look at, a quick look at parameters. How many numbers or parameters do you need to specify one spin state? There are two ways to look at this. Firstly, if you're using spherical coordinates, it takes two angles to specify any direction in space. If you start at the x-axis, you first need a certain angle up towards the y-axis. We'll call that theta for now. And then you need another angle out towards the z-axis, which we'll call phi. So you need two numbers. But there's another way we can look at it through ket vectors. Any ket requires two complex components, alpha up and alpha down, which both have their real and imaginary parts. So it looks like you need four. So why are there only two here? One of these, firstly, isn't necessary because we know the vector must be normalized. So we would create some sort of equation where the inner product of this vector has to be one and solve it, and we could eliminate one variable. But there's one still left. Where does it go? This is where phase comes in. If you multiply any ket vector, A, let's say, by something called a phase factor, which is just a complex number in polar form, which looks like this, e to the i theta. You don't need to worry about this theta. These two are not the same. Some number. e to the i alpha, it could be. This is a complex number shown in polar form. If you multiply any ket vector by something like this, it has no effect on measurements. Whenever you make an inner product or, an, or something like that using one of these phase factors, it just gets canceled out, and you're left with the same probabilities. As such, all observable or, or measurable quantities remain the same. So we can multiply any ket vector by any phase factor and keep the same values. This is where the last parameter comes in. Since ket vectors are phase invariant, one of the parameters from before 
It's just a restatement of the phase, which we don't need. It's not necessary. So we're down to two. All right, next time we're going to take a look at whether or not we even need complex numbers like these and these in quantum mechanics. Hint, we do.